Good morning from the Hideaway and also from the Bullock County Historical Society. It's a glorious chilly day in the year 2021. Today, we are going to talk about a favorite thing of mine, which all of you know is art. Our corporate sponsors today are TD Contractors, Citizens Bank, and Denmark Furniture and Sleep Shop. Please tell these great folks how much we appreciate their support. Statesboro has always been blessed with a plethora of great artists. Today, I want to talk about just a few of them that are featured in mine and Bill's collections. Betty Bird Foy Sanders has probably done more to promote the arts in Georgia than anyone I know. She began the Georgia Council for the Arts, which allows art to reach across our, for the most part, rural state. She has endowed and cultured the Betty Foy Sanders Art Department at Georgia Southern. She oversaw the building of the present governor's mansion on West Paces Ferry in Atlanta. And I could go on and on about Betty Bird. I'm honored to call her my friend. Betty was born on a farm in Bullock County or Canla County in 1926. She graduated from the University of Georgia and that's where she met Carl Sanders. My mama had a car and Betty Bird rode back and forth to Athens with her during their matriculation there. She was and is a fashion statement, known for her hats in particular. In fact, I was a guest at her 80th birthday, which she shared with her dear sister, Teresa Brannon, at Forest Heights Country Club. The table arrangements included hats from her collection and hundreds and hundreds of roses. It was spectacular. Betty did this painting of the old walnut tree for my uncle Gus Sawyer. When his wife, my Aunt T. Sawyer, died, she left me this prize painting. There are two famous paintings of the infamous walnut tree. This one by Betty Bird Foy Sanders and one other by Ethel Floyd, which is housed at the Statesboro Regional Library. This is one of my favorite things. Roxy Renly was a dear friend of my mama's. She was like an aunt to me and Bill. We shared many, many visits through the years. In fact, this particular piece of art was a gift to Bill for some of his handiwork he did for Roxy at her home on Preston Drive. Roxy was born in Indiana. She volunteered for the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps in 1943. Here she met Captain Georgia B. Watson, who became her lifetime partner. We can credit Georgia for bringing Roxy to Statesboro and Georgia Southern. Roxy studied art at Peabody in Nashville, where she received her BA and her MA degrees. Roxy is credited with developing the, the art department at Georgia Southern. She was chosen as legend of the arts for Statesboro by the Averett Center for Arts. This is a painting commissioned by Roxy to do for me when I built my home on Savannah Avenue in 2001. It is wonderful of the 100 year old trees on the property. When Bill and I were in Ireland honeymooning, the painting disappeared. Yes, we got home and there's no painting. Roxy talked the house sitters into letting her get it. She'd never liked it. And so she did a redo. Bill and I just loved the redo. This painting was done by Roxy when she was 90 years old in 2009. It was shown at her last gallery show for her birthday party. It is titled Contrast and Unity, Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 3, Fourth Movement. 
Roxy did this one in 1965, and it's entitled Monet Revisited. Great title. This painting was a wedding present from Joe and Marianne Olson, along with their son and daughter-in-law, Dave and Katie Olson. Joe was born and raised in Philadelphia, and he graduated from Temple University with a Master of Fine Arts. He obtained his doctorate in art education from the University of Georgia while studying with the famous Lamar Dodd. He moved to Statesboro in 1969 and had a 30-year career teaching art at Georgia Southern. This particular piece is titled Whirl Away. Isn't that a wonderful title? Whirl Away. Hitty Bach was born in Germany in 1917, the daughter of a political activist who spent a year in the prison at Dachau in the 1930s. She grew up during the rise of fascism in Germany. In 1949, she married fellow art student Brunzel Bach. She did preservation work at the Gutenberg Museum in Mainz, Germany. I so enjoyed visiting this museum many years ago. In 1972, Hitty and Brimi moved to Statesboro, Georgia. She taught at Georgia Southern. Her life was sad. She suffered a serious stroke in 1982, and the next year her son, Pieta, died in a car crash. I remember it very well. In 1990, Hitty married another artist, Charles Counts, who lived in northern Nigeria. Hitty loved living in Africa, but moved to Oak Ridge, Tennessee after Charles died. Oak Ridge was Charles' hometown. She died in 2010. I treasured this print of downtown Statesboro done by Hitty. Here's another one of her pieces. It's entitled, The Great American Mutt. This was done long before adopting uh, puppies and dogs and cats was in vogue. This is probably my favorite Hitty piece. It's entitled, The Joneses is, is, do you get it on so many levels? The Joneses is, 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 keeping up with the Joneses. Bruno Bach was a favorite of his students at Georgia Southern during the years of 1973 to 1981. He was a thinking man's artist whose legacy continues to engage people long after his passing. He was born in Poland in 1922, where his mother was the librarian in a small town. He fought against the German invasion in World War II. He was captured and served time in the Chimic concentration camp in France, where he remained until he was freed by the American Allied forces. Let's remember that artists were banned driven into exile, and many killed during the Hitler era. Bruni's signature piece was completed in 1961, and I just did some research on it. It's fabulous. It's a massive stained glass window that's a wall, and it's located at the St. John's Abbey, which is in Collegeville, Minnesota. For some reason, my piece by Bruni called The Old Peasant from the Family of Man series reminds me of this stained glass window. Isn't it spectacular? Scott Fox is a native of Savannah and he lived in Statesboro from uh, 2010 until 2016. He received his BFA from the Atlanta College of Art and his MFA from Georgia Southern. We are fortunate to have several of his pieces. This large oil painting entitled Pickling Time at the Farm was a commission piece Bill and I had done for our farm home. A favorite of many visitors to the hideaway is Picasso's take on Blind Willie McTell. Don't you just love Blind Willie as the blue man? This piece by Scott 
was the winner of the Averett Center of the Arts Jury Show in 2014. It's entitled Cotton Icon. Scott is a very talented, talented man. He developed the Old Scarecrow States for a Medicine Show in 2011, which was awarded the Program of the Year by the Georgia Historical Society. It tells the historical story of Statesboro and Bullock County. It is shown every year to every third grader in Bullock County, about a thousand every year. Not to rest on his laurels, he then completed an Eagle Nation on Parade for BCHS, which again won a Roger Warlock History Award, that's hard to say, from the Georgia Historical Society. Scott was given the Kent Mabry Award for Excellence in Education by the Society in 2015 for both of these accomplishments. This award is not given annually, it's only given when it is merited. Scott and his husband, Tim Chapman, now live in Carrollton, Georgia. Bill and I are sponsoring a gallery show this month at the Averitt Center for the Arts, featuring a favorite folk artist of ours, Leonard Jones. He is from Lincolnton, Georgia, not Statesboro, but he's wonderful. Mask up and venture downtown. We know you will love this show, especially if you're a fan of really good folk art. Until later, bye.